uh, missionary Alan Greer. He was here with us Friday night, ministered Friday night. Amen. Minister this morning. Make sure you get that CD and Friday night CD. And uh, he's he lives in Oklahoma. He goes to a church that I used to go to, Victory. And uh, his pastor was my pastor, Pastor Billy Joe. And uh, now his son is pastor of the church. Uh, but he's right here doing some work here with at North Carolina, right? North Carolina. And he called up and I said, you know, come on down and preach. Praise God. So he's here. Let's give him a warm welcome, missionary Alan Greer. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Everybody say, glory to, glory to God. I don't know about you. I'd rather stand out here. Is that okay? God is so good. God is good. Say this with God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. You can be seated. First of all, I'd like to thank Pastor Carl and Pastor Abby. You know what? I travel a lot. And, you know, we all have a tendency to have favorite people. Well, it didn't take me long to realize that these are two of my favorite people in the whole world right here. You, you don't realize what an honor that you have of having them as your pastor. And I honor them and lift them up. Because they are, if you look up the word pastors in a dictionary, their picture would have to be beside the word. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And all the glory goes to God. Amen. So God is in our midst. Wow. I, I, I have... I, I sort of like that, hey, sometimes I get where I can't speak. <laughs> you know? Well, I, I've got a, 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 some words that I want to share with you today. But in the circles that from Pastor and I graduated the same year from Rama, and a lot of the churches that uh, people, graduates from Rama, have started are called Word of Faith churches. But Pastor said this church is a word of and spirit church. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Well, we have saw the spirit in action this morning. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That corporate anointing that he was talking about, one of the things I was going to mention today, that corporate anointing can do so much more than we can do. I mean, it's an anointing. It's a power from God. It's an anointing that we cannot produce in the physical. No matter how hard we try, no matter how good we think we are, we cannot produce the anointing, but God can. And he can put it in the Old Testament. The priests were anointed. The Holy Spirit, the, the presence of God would come up on them. How many of you know that? In the Old Testament, the Spirit of God just came up on them. But in the New Testament, <laughs> glory to God. He come to live on the inside of us and he's an ever present help, ever present enabler, an ever present developer, an ever present comforter, everything that you need in life. He's the everything. He's the everything. He's all. He is all. Uh, uh, Joel, if you would put up... Uh, Isaiah 10, 27, and pastor's already mentioned the scripture this morning, but we want to begin with this, as Dad Hagen used to say. This would be our golden text. In other words, it's the beginning point. But in, even in the Old Testament, they talked a lot about the anointing. And it's so important for the job that lays before us, the things that we've got to do, the things God has called us to do, it's so important to have that anointing. Because we can't carry out His callings in the flesh. It's impossible. It's like the man that had preached for 40 years and never been born again. And he preached from the quarterly, Sunday school quarterly. You know? 
Oh, my quarterlies, I was telling pastors, the quarterlies that we had when I was in the Baptist church. Uh Uh-oh, I said that word. (laughs) Our quarterlies, when it came to the 11th chapter, I'll share that. When it came to the 11th chapter of 1 Corinthians, you know, we took communion. Amen? Amen. The 12th chapter, we skipped. Where it talked about the gifts of the Spirit. The 13th chapter, we loved everybody. 1 Corinthians 13, the love chapter. We loved everybody. Skip chapter 14. Paul said, I pray in tongues more than you all. He was southern, you know. Because he said, I pray in tongues more than you all. We skipped the 14th chapter, went to the 15th chapter where we buried everybody. Oh, death, where is that state? You know, but there's an anointing that this scripture talks about right here. And it shall come to pass in that day. What is that day? Today. In that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. It's not because we're good preachers. It's not because we're good singers, good musicians. No, it's because of the anointing. It's because of the power, say power, Power. of God that the burdens are removed. Now, I I used to live, used to say that, uh, and we heard it pretty often saying, uh, uh, the yoke shall be destroyed or shall be broken because of the anointing. But uh, my mom, she used to collect souvenirs from all different places, and she had plates. Any of you ladies ever collect plates with different sayings or photographs or something like that on them? And sometimes she'd accidentally break one, just, you know, like, you know, maybe two or three pieces. She'd get some glue, and she'd glue it back together, and it was broke. But if one fell off the high shelf where she was at and hit the floor, it went into a million pieces, and... It was destroyed. So that's what the anointing does. It destroys the yoke. It removes the burdens. It does not just break it, but it destroys it completely. Amen. In our military, we have ships called what? Destroyers. You know, they're they're anointed. They're built to do a job to destroy the works of the enemy. Amen? Amen. Destroying the the yoke and you know there's yokes of all different kinds. Sickness, disease, uh, Elder was talking about what Jesus did uh, from the broke the curse of the law off of us. You know that's what the anointing does. It breaks all those things off of us. The Word of God, uh, he mentioned it earlier, a a lamp unto my feet. You know, it guides us. It directs us. It's the thing that keeps us in the right way, the right path, uh, uh, might say the straight and narrow. The Word of God is always, say this, always. Always. The Word of God is always anointed. The person delivering the Word may not be. That's, that's right. Just like the man that preached 40 years. I had a, my brother told me of a man uh, that in North Carolina that had a similar experience. That he got born again after he had been preaching a, what we would say the gospel for many years. But... The anointing, I looked that up at the dictionary, and the anointing, it says, is to pour on. You remember Aaron? The anointing oil went from the top of his head, it went down. To pour on, smear all over. 
I like that part. I like that. To pour on. To smear all over. <laughs> now you, you ladies would like this. To rub it in. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> rub it in. You know what? That's what God wants to happen to all of us. To, for it to be poured on, smeared all over us, and rubbed in good and deep. Amen. <laughs> there, <laughs> there used to be a product if you had muscle aches and pains called being gay. I don't know why they called it that. Unless after you happen, you'd be happy. I don't know. But you got to rub it in. You got to apply it for it to be effective. Well, how do we get the anointing to be effective in our lives? How do we get that anointing to work for us? You know, <laughs> first of all, let me tell you, the Bible is not a book of recipes. There's no simple, singular way that we can explain to you how that can happen with you because every individual is different. Every person is different. What works for me might not work for you. A, a, a pastor that I was with, and I love the man dearly. Uh, he was like me. He was in a Baptist church, got spilled, filled with the Holy Spirit, got kicked out, started a church. And every time he'd hear a new speaker or go to a seminar or go someplace, he said, oh, yeah, that's what we're going to do. We well, didn't always work because there was no anointing with it. It was a good idea. It was a good thing, but there has to be an, anoint, an anointment that goes with what God says to do to get the job done. Now, we all know Jesus, the Bible says, was both the Son of God and the Son of Man. Did you know he didn't operate in his ministry as the Son of God? The Bible says he laid down his deity. He laid down his abilities. He came to earth as the Son of Man. Remember when he was baptized and John baptized him and it said that the people could see it. And the, visibly, we, we've got the Word. We can follow after the Word and we've got things we can look at. But they didn't have it. But people, when Jesus was baptized, they saw the Spirit of the Lord coming down as in the form of a dove and resting upon him. You know? And we, we, we can, you know, make a, we can have a vision of that. And I saw photographs, and you have too, I'm sure, of that coming down. That is a place when that comes down like a dove. Uh, it's a resting place or it's a place that they come on you. But the Spirit of the Lord came in him. Immediately afterwards, he is drawn away into the wilderness. It said the Spirit, actually the, the King James Version said it drove him into the wilderness. And immediately the devil came to him, began to tempt him, Right? For 40 days and 40 nights, he fasted, he prayed, and was tempted by the devil. And after that, he said, then he came out full, say full, full, full of the Spirit. He came out, and in Luke 14 through 4, Luke 4, 14 through 19, you can, you can read all this for yourself. But he began to say something. And I don't know, you know, it had been some 400 years that they, have, that they didn't have the gospel. And Jesus began to say that he was anointed. Say anointed. anointed. To preach the gospel, to uh, heal the sick, preach, the, preach teach, Heal, set the captives free, set the oppressed free, 
bring sight to the blind, proclaim uh, the year of the Lord for those who are bound. He was anointed. You know, that had never happened before that. And to be honest with you, it doesn't happen now <laughs> unless there's an anointing. You say, but, you know, Jesus was the Son of God. Yeah. But as far as operating in the earth and doing everything that he did, and the Bible says even the books of the world at that time couldn't contain all the things that Jesus did, <clears throat> he operated just like you and I. Just like you and I. There's an anointing. It's an endowment of power. It's, it's a thing that every one of us, I believe deep down inside, we desire to have, but don't know how to achieve it. I, I, <laughs> Matthew 6.33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things shall add unto you. You know, people focus on things now listen to me. People think they focus when they read that scripture. They focus on things because that's what it's, it's talking about in the context. It's talking about being clothed and, you know, having their needs met and all like that. But when I look at that, Matthew 6, 33, I think about what does the kingdom of God <laughs> want me to have? I believe more than anything else, he wants me to have his anointing. Yeah. Why? So we can preach the gospel. So we can heal the sick. So we can set the captives free. Amen. So we can lay hands on the, uh, uh, the blind and they'll see. Yes. Yes. And I said this this morning uh, in the healing class. You know, nowhere does it say that Jesus prayed for the people. Although in Luke he does have a prayer, but when it comes to healing, he just simply allowed the anointing by just touching. The Bible said he laid hands. He didn't pray. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a firm believer that sometimes we pray and hinder God when all we need to do sometimes just touch somebody. Uh-huh. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Sometimes when a person is hurting and we can see that and God puts that compassion in our heart to reach out to them, sometimes it's not the prayer we speak, it's the touch that we have. Just a touch. I don't know about you, Everybody says, I wish I'd lived in the day of Jesus. And in one sense, for one purpose, I would like to have been there too and just to have had his touch. But you know what? Each one of us has that same touch. Because that same power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead dwells in us. That means we have the same ability. Same ability with that anointing. Jesus was anointed. Not as the Son of God, but as the Son of Man. This is something that really, really opened my eyes. I got a revelation from this. John 14, 12. Can you put that up for me, Joel? John 14, 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do. Now remember, if you've got a, uh, a Bible with red letters, this is in red. This is Jesus talking. It's a hot sauce of the Bible. <coughs> when it's in red, it's the hot sauce. Amen. I like the hot sauce. All right. It says, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me and the works that I do shall he do also. Now look at this. And greater works than these shall he do because I go to the Father. He didn't tell us we was going to do less works. 
He's told us that we could do greater works. I like a Smith Wigglesworth. All of you heard of Smith Wigglesworth. You know, quoted Smith Wigglesworth, heard about him, read about him. I don't think anybody here probably knew him since he's been a long time ago. You know. <laughs> but under his ministry, I understand that there was 23 people, 22, 23 people raised from the dead. How many of you had? That happens. That happens. Now you say, well, that's for the pastor. That's for the evangelist. That's for the prophet. That's for the apostle. That's for the teacher. No, 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 no. It's for anybody who reads this word right here. Greater work shall you do. You know? It, it's, oh, my goodness. God's power, his anointing, is not limited to who we are. It's in whose we are. And whom do we belong to? Because, you know, I was amazed at this. And greater works than these. You remember I said earlier, I believe it's in Luke, it says that even if everything was written down that Jesus did, the books of the world at that time wouldn't contain all his works. That's a lot, you know. But the one thing that struck me the most about this is this scripture right here says, Greater works than these shall you do, or shall he do, or shall you do, puts me on the same level with Jesus. <laughs> you talk about being in some good company. Huh? Yeah. We're in good company. Because that's Jesus. We're right there. We're right beside him. Not only is he upon us, but he's in us. There's an anointing that removes the burden and destroys the yoke. That corporate anointing this morning, I was thinking about, I watched your service from last week before I came this week. I was almost scared to show up. <laughs> but about, I don't know, I was driving. I don't remember where I was at. And the Lord told me I was coming here and for me to speak on the anointing. Why? Why, why, why? Because we all need to know. <coughs> we are anointed to carry out and do the works. What are the works? Lay hands on the sick, see them recover. Lay hands on those that are bound, see them set free. Lay our hands on the blind and see their eyes to be opened. You know, that same anointing. We're equal. That same power, I said it, that same power that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us. It's there. It's part of us. We receive all these things by faith. It's, you have to believe and then receive. I told a story this morning about going to the young man in the hospital, and I was Baptist. I had no idea. I didn't know anything about what it meant to lay hands on people or anything like that. But I just had this in my heart that if I could just go and lay my hands on him, he'd live, not die. He'd been in a terrible car accident. And I didn't understand it. You know what? I went. I was obedient. I went from Ash County to Kingsport, Tennessee. Went to the hospital, laid hands on him. And I, the only thing I knew was what God told me, if I go lay hands on him, he'd live and not die. Well, that's what happened. That's all I knew. I was a Baptist. They never laid hands on anybody except maybe to kick you out. I mean, <laughs> help you through the door. I, I was I was a Southern Baptist pastor, and when I got spirit filled, they took my name, everything. I never got a bit more literature. I never got nothing. <laughs> they took my name as off as if I had never existed. <laughs> Bless their darling hearts. 
Best thing ever happened to me. Because why? Got me to searching. Got me to looking. Wasn't long until my wife been watching PTL. Anybody remember PTL? Well, at that time, we had a, a building supply business, and I did some building on the side, and this, that, and the other, and I'd come home for lunch, and my wife had just finished watching. I'd get there just as it's going off, and Jim Baker was asking for money. <clears throat> Boy, it gets quiet when you say that. <laughs> Jim Baker was asking for money. How many of you know God's got a sense of humor? We're talking about life. And God's got a sense of humor, and... So she was. She would keep telling me, "You need to watch this." I said, "No, nah, I'm not going to watch it." Well, the same program come on again at night, right after the news, and she'd sit up and watch it. And she'd say, "Honey, you need to watch." It. I said, no, I'm going to bed. I got to work. I got to go to work tomorrow. I work in pastor church too. You know, like I say, God's got a sense of humor. So I'd pray, God, please, please, don't let what she's watching on TV hurt her. And she is in there watching the TV and said, Oh, Lord, please get Alan to accept this. <laughs> and God answered both prayers. It didn't hurt me. Didn't hurt her. And I accepted it. And you know what? Made her so mad when I got the Holy Ghost before she did. But you know what? Along with that came a different life. There was an anointing that I'd never, ever had before. But you know what one of the first things that the anointing does? Not to make you famous or to let you heal the sick or something, but it caused that love to flow in you. You know, that love is what breaks, covers multitudes of sin. It's that love. That, that, my goodness, you just, you just fall in love with God. You just fall in love with Jesus. You just fall in love with the Word. I couldn't get enough of the Word at that time, you know. You know how it was in Bible school? All you want to do is eat the Word, you know. Get that anointing. The Word's anointed. Get that Word in us. Brings the anointing. That's the way that we get closer to God is to get that Word in us. At, we we got to get that word in us because we're equal. Say this, I'm equal, I'm equal. With, Jesus with Jesus because of the anointing, of the anointing. that destroys, destroys the yoke and removes the burden. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I want to, I've got several scriptures here, but one I want to show you, uh, 1 John 2, verse 20. Now, but you have an unction from the Holy One and you know all things. <laughs> yeah, something to, be, to shout about. That word unction, most of his Bible probably, it's translated anointing. In the New King James, it's anointing. In the regular King James, it's an unction. God will cause you to be able, we think unction is speaking, and it is, but it's speaking with an anointing that does different things from the Holy One that you know all things. And now look at verse 27. The same chapter, verse 27. 1 John 2, 27. But the anointing, say anointing, anointing. which you have received... Say, I have received, of him abideth in you, and you need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, you shall abide in him. So just that's proof I am not lying to you today. <laughs> yeah. That anointing which you have received. My, 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 my. If we knew, if we just knew and, and realized what God has placed within us, 
my, my, you, you know, you'd be breaking these walls out way before the scheduled time that you were thinking about, you know? If we just knew that. I don't know how many people, I, I looked it up last time I was here and I forgot the, the uh, population of this city. But I guarantee you one thing, they may think you've been ignorant and unlearned, but they will have to say one thing, they know you've been with Jesus Amen. because of that anointing. Because it destroys the yoke and removes the burden. Uh, uh, God's the only one that can do that. Do you know any other religion where there's an anointing? There's no anointing with Buddha? <laughs> Muhammad? <laughs> I don't know. The anointing is so important that we not just know, that we don't just know that it's Jesus was anointed, but we got to know that we are anointed. Now, I believe in calling for the elders of the church and praying. If you know, a lot of people need prayer. Thank God for... Uh, Hospitals and doctors and stuff. Dad Haken used to say, "Keep people alive long enough till their faith reaches a point where they can be healed and stuff like that." And that's fantastic. That's great. But there comes a time when we have to stand on our own faith. Like I was telling about my son this morning. I asked him at the point of contact when he found he had a tumor in his spine. I asked him. I said, "Greg, what is your point of contact?" What, what do you think he do? He said, Dad, if I just get that tumor out, I'll, I'll be fine. Mm. Well, he was. Got it out, he was fine. My other son, I'll share this story real quick. My other son, not too long after his marriage, he was about uh, probably in the third year of his marriage, and I just had a little daughter. Was, she was six months old, and they had come to my house to visit from Columbia, Missouri to Tulsa, which is about a six hour drive, 340 miles. I guess it's six hours to drive fast. <laughs> Usually took me longer, six and a half, seven. But anyway, they were on their way home. They'd been down to Tulsa visiting. And they left to go home. And one of the very few times that I didn't pray over them in their journey when they left, one of the few times. About, they left that afternoon. About 9 o'clock that night, I got a phone call. And it was my daughter-in-law, hysterical. They had had an accident. And she, her seat in the car was broken back. Her six-month-old granddaughter was in the back of the car. <clears throat> and she was in the uh, car seat. She was not hurt. My daughter-in-law was not hurt. But my son, the car flipped over on top of a guardrail, his head went out the side window and he took his top of his head completely off right here. Well, he was upside down. The car was on the guardrail and he was upside down in the car. And she finally got him awake. What had happened to cause the accident, there was a deer that had been run over and he swerved to miss it. There was another car sitting beside the road when all this happened, watch it. So they called 911. So she finally got him awake because it knocked him out. But she got him awake and she was hysterical. She says, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do? He said, call my parents. Call my parents. He called, or she called, and she told me what was going on. I said, are you okay? She said, yeah. I said, is Kylie okay? She said, yeah. But she said, Eric's in the car upside down and he is bleeding from his head so profusely. Well, somehow or another, nobody knows it till this day who done it, but when he had his seatbelt on and he was upside down and that seatbelt was around his neck and it was choking him. Some of them said it was a trucker. Some of them said it was an EMT. All of them said there was no truckers around. There was The EMT swore they didn't cut the seatbelt off but somebody cut that seatbelt off to keep him from being choked. It was an angel. I have no doubt in my mind. That happened at about the same time that she was talking to me on the telephone 
And that anointing that was within me when she was hysterical and saying, you know, what she was saying, I said, don't worry. He will be okay. See, that anointing, look what it says. It'll teach you all things and is truth. Well, I, I, you know, I didn't, you know, in the natural, I didn't know he'd be okay. Turned upside down in the car and his head bleeding like that. But God did. And that anointing allowed me to be in peace. Well, we left. We packed up our clothes. We left, got in the car, drove up to Columbia, Missouri, to the University of Missouri Hospital. And got there, he was sitting up in bed laughing. <laughs> yeah. And you know what the ambulance driver had told her? He, they put her and Kylie, my granddaughter, in one in one ambulance and sent them on their way. And they, she told him, uh, the EMT driver told her before she left, said, go tell your husband goodbye. He is not going to make it. But God. But God. When I got there, they hadn't even cleaned him up. There was pieces of glass, asphalt, everything. You could see his skull. You think your, your scalp's only about this thick, but it's, really it's about three quarters of an inch thick. They said it's going to take multiple surgeries to get that back to normal. They cut out a piece of his thigh about so big, folded it over, put it in that big old hole that was up there. He's never had a surgery since. Yeah. He don't have any hair, but... <laughs> he does have a life. And it was the anointing, honestly, without that anointing, he may not have been here. But it's the anointing that destroyed that burden, removed it completely. Amen. You know what? He, he, watches, he watches you live here, because since I was here last time, he likes to see it. The anointing removes burdens and destroys yokes. And it's in you. I said it's in you. You don't have to wait for pastor to be anointed to come and call uh, to pray for somebody. Just go do it. Just go do it. I said go do it. I talked about this morning when my kids were small. They get sick. They didn't ask me to take them to the doctor. They didn't ask for medicine. Come crawl up on my lap and they say, I say, what's wrong? I say, Daddy, I want you to pray for me. I'd pray for them, make them on their way. I'd never hear anything else about it. Yeah. Because of the anointing. Destroy the yoke and remove the burden. It's a burden if your children are sick. Yeah, yeah. It's a burden. But God said, listen to this. God said, <laughs> greater works than you, than these shall you do. Jesus was speaking. He, he said, I don't ever say anything that God doesn't say, that I hear the Father speak first. So God was speaking. Greater works than these shall you do, because Jesus said, I am going to my Father. I'm going home. I'm going to leave this with you, and it's up to you to carry out this will and this work in the earth. Amen. Amen. Amen? That means each one of us, us, right here, we're his hands, his feet, his eyes, his ears, and his voice yes. in this earth. And it's up to us to see the yokes removed, the burdens lifted, and the anointing. I guarantee you, when we do those things, the anointing will increase, just like we was talking about the uh, prosperity. It, uh, it'll, the anointing will increase also. Increase, increase, increase. The anointing will increase. Say increase. Increase, increase the anointing in me. Lord, I thank you 
for that anointing. That anointing doesn't just remove and doesn't just break. It destroys completely. Out of the way. That Hagen, you've got the book in there. Most of all I'm telling you comes right out of that book, Understand the Anointing by Kennedy Hagen. But he said this, and this is a quote from him. Often our heads have been educated at the expense of our spirits. We've been told we can't do things. We've been told we can't do what Jesus did. You know. We've been told we can't. But he says we can. I'd rather believe him. Amen. I'd rather believe Jesus. I'd rather believe his word. I'd rather... Pastor, come here. The anointing that resides in this man right here. Wow. This morning, I thought, Lord, I don't have to say a word because that anointing was flowing through you. The body, and you said it, the corporate anointing. The corporate anointing. My, 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 my. This church can change Virginia. This church can change the entire state of Virginia. And you're so close to Washington, that's the place it's going to start. Amen. It's the anointing that's going to destroy that yoke. I don't know many churches that's got that anointing like you've got here today, like we had in that service this morning. But I just want you to understand, you've got that anointing. This church, he's your leader. It's a corporate anointing. Every corporation has a, a CEO. I don't know what you call it. He's your CEO of this anointed company right here. Amen. And that anointing, that anointing is going to destroy. Say destroy. Destroy many burdens and destroy the yokes. Amen. Stand up with me. Now, I, I said all these things. Many of you here, I don't know what time it is, preach myself happy anyway, but many of you here have often thought, I'm not good enough. I'm not. I don't know the word enough. Did you notice when he was talking about those things, he didn't tell us that we had to be, uh, that we had to know everything? We don't have to know everything for it to work. We don't have to know everything the Spirit does. We just have to let Him flow. Last week after I watched your service and I put a little note on the bottom, I just pray that the flow of that river, that flow of that river, that flow of that river will just continue to go and grow and be in the people's lives. Uh, what's the name of the river right over here where we come across the bridge? Shenandoah River it's like that river how long has it been flowing how long has it been we don't want it to stop the flow of the Holy Ghost we don't want it to stop we want it to keep going we want it to get stronger we want it to build up like a flood like a flood he said I lift up a standard God's lifting up that standard you're here, right where you're sitting, right where you are. I want you to make a confession, every head bowed, every eye closed. I want you to make your own confession and say this with me. Lord, I receive your anointing that removes the burdens and destroys the yokes. But I don't want it just for myself. I want to give it. It's a free gift. And I want to bestow it upon everyone that I see. My children, my family, my husband, my wife, the people I work with, everyone I come in contact with, help them to see that anointing, that person of Jesus 
in me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, real quick, I told you.